All right, welcome to episode 304 Fellow of the Auto, Auto Detailers. Detailers Podcast. Welcome to the show that features interviews with today's time. most successful that is auto no detailers. Is this is the Auto that. Detailing I did not, Podcast. I did Here's not. your host, check Jimbo right Bailey. We got on and I withheld it till we started recording. Back for the 11th time, the most of all time, <laughs> Mr. Kevin Davis. Welcome back to the show. Hey, thanks. That's crazy. I can't believe it's 11. Either either A, you uh, forget to book guests a lot, or uh, I don't know what B would be. You'd like... uh, let's go with B, because okay. A seems a little backhanded. <laughs> <laughs> I Usually, Kevin, I reach out to you when uh, I haven't reached out to any other guest, and I don't want to talk by myself. Then, yeah, then I call you, and I'm like, "Hey, That's okay. I don't, I don't, I don't mind being your backup. That's okay. <laughs> it's always fun." The story of your life, right? That's the number right. two. Sure. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm the athletic supporter of uh, the detailing world. That's what I'll call myself now. I, I hear you. I hear you. So, catch us up to speed on, on kind of what you've been doing, and then we're going to talk about an interesting topic. Um, but why don't you just catch us up to speed with what you've been got going on? So I can't believe it's 2000, October, whatever it is, the 4th of 2017. Um, we have been home an average of eight days at a time since January. Oh, my gosh. Uh, and we spent about five months um, away from our house. So our longest stretch was about 20 days to be home. So it's been uh, it's been crazy. Mostly stuff like we call this. I've been joking with her, calling this a year of Michelle, which is my wife. Uh, <laughs> she's had some awesome opportunities this year, and and uh, so we've been sort of pursuing those. And we'll talk about the uh, consequences of doing that uh, in this. But uh, yeah, it's been it's been an awesome time. We've been trying to manage that, manage uh, another new project, and then uh, obviously all the helper brand stuff uh, gets to be a challenge also. So I've been trying to keep up. And everything for her has been uh, based around the the racing car sure. or the off roading yeah, car. Yeah, so Sugar Sugar High Motorsports, Sugar High. There you go. Uh, which is last year was just Team Sugar High was sort of this lower end thing. But you know, me being me, uh, we basically created an entire brand um, called Sugar High Motorsports, and we run pretty much. We did about eight different events this year. Um, okay, that's around the one of the things that started was the rebel rally which is this big um you froze was this big off-road rally there you go um we're back uh was this big off-road rally that she's doing uh which actually we leave for on monday it's 1200 miles through the desert uh and then she was given an opportunity from bogey who is on a show called all girls garage in uh on velocity to uh seem a truck it's a 57 Chevy with a BMW engine in it. So it's going to be pretty cool. Holy crap. And is that generating revenue or is that more of a hobby? No, it's kind of a hobby. Uh, it's mostly a hobby. We use it, you know, we did some sponsorship stuff on the build. So there's some marketing components to that. Um, and also it just, it adds to our awareness um, sort of in the market. Uh, one of the things we use Sugar High Motorsports for is sort of, um, you know, for us, it's it's more to reach uh, people with a positive message about marriage and family and um, that kind of thing. So that's been really fun to see how that's progressing. Um, but uh, we do have sponsors. Um, we still, you know, we're kind of in almost break even mode with our sponsorships because all this crap is super expensive. Um, but uh, no, it's not really a it's not a a business that we're generating revenue out of directly. Got it. Got it. So then in from our other previous 10 episodes, we've, we've discussed kind of the other streams of income that you have, um, or that one should have. And that's kind of become a big time focus for me is like multiple streams of income that can allow you to do, um, you know, stuff like you're talking about, or as I told you before we started recording, my wife is actually working right now as I record this podcast episode, <laughs> you know, and, nice. and so, you know, it's allowed, uh, multiple streams of income have allowed me a little bit more flexibility in my days as well. But, but what, 
what has been going on with the helper brands? Have have those been neglected because uh, of this other this uh, sugar high motorsports thing, or what's been going on with with that? Well, yeah, I mean, basically, we've talked about that multitasking is a facade. Right. So you can only put so much energy into a given thing. It's been really challenging with all the travel, um, which I could sort of equate our travel with you know, someone who's working, you know, all day long out in, in their shop or whatever, just inability to be able to manage, uh, your time, uh, not really manage the time, but just, there's only so many hours in a day. Um, so with the helper brands, uh, we also had, I think we talked about in the last podcast, we had a little bit of a, a setback yes. with some staffing things. And so that really derailed a lot of a lot for us. Mm-hmm. Um, and so especially with the, the cleaners helper brand. And so we're, we're gradually trying to rebuild that. Um, and, um, our consumer brands we're working on and then detailers helper is still, um, pretty strong, but, uh, whenever I'm not in front and and really pursuing that obviously it takes a little bit of a backseat and revenue drops so that's sort of where we're at with all that we've got some plans to move forward um essentially we're waiting to be home which will be after SEMA for the most part and then we can uh we can engage a lot more and begin to to book uh start working on that stuff some more and isn't that the truth and i think that's relevant for uh whether you have a product company like you do or you have a um are you? <laughs> Sorry, dog. I'm gonna keep talking. If, if you can hear me, I'm gonna keep talking. I can uh, hear you. All right, cool. So uh, you know whether you have a product brand business or a physical brand or or product or or just a detailing business, if you're not constantly staying on top of it and really relentless with it, you know it can sag and that can really you know affect everything is that what you would you say like since the beginning of the year everything is the whole focus has been sugar high and not really the helper brands can you hear me i i couldn't nope Uh, oh yeah sorry i can hear you but did i I got i got the focus has been Sorry. No, so the so the focus has been more so on sugar high, right? So um yeah. a, as the focus has been more on sugar high, what has that done? Um I kind of want to go into what we talked about yesterday of like, you know, what happens when you neglect your company for a year, you know? Well, it's sort of it's interesting because even though um you know, a lot of our marketing with the helper brands just in general, especially detailers helper, we can just talk about detailers helper in specifics, but okay. is is around social media. Um just for this example. So we do a lot with social media and that requires, you know, pretty much daily type updates. Um and what's happened in my case is that we spent so much time um, on the Sugar High Motorsports side of social media that Detailers Helper and the Helper brands in general just suffered because I wasn't able um, to keep up on that side of things. It becomes a bit cyclical because if, if you're not out in front uh, in social media doing everything you need to do on social media, then you, know, you get less attention, um, less sharing, less people interested in the product, um, and that sort of thing. I mean, I, we've been really blessed because there's so many detailers now that are using the belts and 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 uh, do a lot of our social media stuff for us. Um, not paid, but they just they share uh, and they have pictures with with detailers helpers on and and that kind of thing. So that helps, but uh, still, it's just I mean, I can see a definitive uh, drop off after probably early spring. Um, mm. things, things really started to drop off and that's just a matter of, you know, being too busy to keep up with it. So, so what, what advice would you give to someone who, because you equated travel time with someone, you know, spending all day in their shop working on a car and a lot of these guys do, right? They're, they're yeah. polishing away day in, day, day out, you know? And so it's, it's hard to always, you know, uh, keep, keep the you're, you're working on the here and now business right but it's you right. want business for next week and so in order to have business next week you need to do stuff this week right but if you're working on something this week it's hard to to still keep the pipeline full of work for next week so what what kind of would you suggest guys do or or do you do you being on this end of it now for you are there things that you would implement or do that could 
almost make it seem like you didn't go away? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I was able to sort of manage my time with this advice um, fairly effectively, but it's just a matter of being spread too thin over too many different projects. But if we're assuming that uh, the average detailer has one business to run, um, then then it's probably a little bit more effective for him. Um, and it's basically what I would do if I were detailing full time now is I would I would actually schedule in as if it were a car a certain amount of time per day um, to work on uh, marketing, sales, uh, learning more about Facebook ads and Google ads and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I would use that time. And because if you don't schedule it, what are you going to do? You're going to fill it up with other stuff. Um, and so that's pretty, that's pretty important to get that time scheduled out on your, uh, on your calendar. I love that. I think that's a really, really good tip. I've actually started to do do that too of like, okay, from, I'm not going to schedule anything until 10 AM because from eight to 10, cause now I had, I, my kids are starting to go to school, school started back up. And so I've had to schedule stuff that isn't necessarily work related, but in order to push back work and stuff like that. There's a tool, I don't know if you've ever heard of it, Kevin, called Buffer, B-U-F-F-E-R. Um, and it is a, they have a free version and then they have a paid version, but it's 10, the, the paid version is only 10 bucks a month, but you can schedule out social media posts as many as you want in a day uh, for as far out as you want. And I was using that for a little bit just to keep, like you said, keep the engagement coming, you know, right. sparking interest and, and doing that. Um, and so that, I mean, for you and everyone else listening, that may be a cool tool to, you know, if you, of course you're traveling, but so you're driving, so it's not like you're, you're flying places where you have a, you know, four or five hours of downtime to just do whatever, or else you wouldn't need a service like buffer, but it's really helped me. I can sit down for an hour and, uh, schedule out, you know, a month and a half, two months worth of, post of daily post. Now I've lagged on that myself, you know, because it, you th- it, the, the flip side to that is you're scheduled out a month and a half out a post. And then that month and a half comes really quick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, For you sure. and that's a, a, that's a good tool. That sounds like a good tool because you're creating the content. What, you know, all these guys try to sell you on is, is, um, these managed social media managers. Um, and I've looked at that before. I actually gave a free trial stuff, and and the problem is, is it has this very generic voice to it, right? Uh, and so it doesn't, you know, you're not gonna, you're not going to attract the right customers with that. So using something like Buffer, and you can end up just pushing out your stuff um, on your own. Basically, you're right. creating content and then push it out. That sounds like a, that sounds like a great tool. And that's basically what I was doing is, is repurposing older content too, because you can create a queue uh, or basically a, a ginormous bowl of your content and then you can reuse it, repurpose it and repost it, you know, and all I was looking for is like conversation starters, you know what I mean? So whether that be reposting an episode or asking a question as a status or something like that, that's, that's and what is that I was mainly using. Facebook or does it do Instagram? Okay, and stuff so too? it will do uh, it will do Facebook, it'll do Twitter, it will do Instagram, but it won't actually post uh, for you on Instagram, but it'll queue up all the posts. And then you actually have to go for some reason. Um, it, yeah, the Instagram back end code has always been problematic for all those. Yeah. And, and pretty much everybody else. It, I'm not sure why that is, but. Yeah, and it's basically a, a buffer is another version of something like Hootsuite, you know. Um, and there's analytics so you can see what posts uh, have done better um, and maybe repost those ones, you know, but it, it'll show you the engagement, which is kind of cool. Um, and once you have like this whole queue of content, it makes it a little bit easier to schedule out as far in advance as possible. That was, I don't know, just a random kind of tool that yeah. I was hey, using. You want to, I was going to ask you a question about that. Are yeah. you using Instagram as a business? No, the short answer is yes, no. <laughs> well, I know you're like me. You have multiple accounts. So. I, I do, and I really only use my personal account. Um, and I'm, 
I don't know how I feel about it, but I'm not I, I'm not in love with using Instagram or posting on Instagram. So I, I'm like I try to do it, but I just I'm not in I'm more of like a ghost follower to a lot of things. And right. so I, I yeah. So you don't think it's an effective tool for lo- for local detailers? I'm just curious. Uh, n- not, no. I would I would say it it is and can be definitely. I just suck at it. So <laughs> I actually think it's one of the better uh, social media platforms as far as like reach and engagement and and effectiveness. Um, I'm just not good at it, and it right. does it well, doesn't come think- natural to me. I think you're just like most detailers. Um, I that's sort of a loaded question. I think actually Instagram is an awesome tool for detailers because it's such a visual art, right? Um, and visual business. But I think where all of the detailers are failing that I've seen and I follow on Instagram, um, all you see is Ferraris and Porsches, and you know we've talked about it before. You post that one car that you did in you know 1997 right. over and over again. Um, versus targeted posts um, that fits their market. So, you know, before and afters of mom, you know, mom vans or suburbans or wh- whoever, whatever your market happens to be. But um, my assumption there is that of all the people I follow, there's no way every single one of them does, you know, Porsches every day. Right. Just not, it's just not possible. So, um, and I think some of the some of the uh, product brand companies are doing a very very good job with um, Instagram, and I feel like Instagram can be highly effective. Where I feel like it would be uh, super effective for detailers is like yeah, targeting like a hyper. I'm a big fan of for especially for detailers is is targeting like really hyper local areas. Right. So, so really just, and then working your way out. Right. So even with, if we go into SEO or anything like that, like really nailing down, you know, hyper local, uh, areas, longer tail keywords, you know, not, not, not really worried about for me, not really worried about like, Oh, mobile auto detailers in orange County, but like mobile auto detailers in seal beach. Right. Right. And And that's where I get, a lot of my business and I, and it, cause it's easier to rank like that. Right. And it's, it's less daunting to target your hyper, hyper local area. Right. So that's where I think it could be effective. Um, and again, I'm more so worried currently about growing my personal brand and the podcast brand versus like my detailing business. Right. So that's where, uh, some of this is that's probably why I don't really hyper focus on my detailing Instagram page. Uh, but I do have some ideas of what I would do. <laughs> yeah. I mean, one thing when you're talking about local that you could do as a detailer is, is actually Instagram from within your local area and then make sure you're tagging those businesses. Like, I don't know if you go to Starbucks every day and get, right. co- get your latte, make sure you tag and so know, I got a great story about this, that, right? I got a great, then that's going to, that's going to come up in the feed of all your local people, because it's the same people that, you know, the algorithm will tie in your post with, you know, whoever's Starbucks post from yesterday. And then they'll start seeing, then they'll see that in your, in the, uh, suggested following. Yeah. And you got to think Instagram, you have to have good imagery, right? You have to have something that's going to captivate the eye of the people looking. And that's why I feel like I suck at it because I'm not, I'm not good at that, right? I'm not I don't yeah. capture the good angle. I don't capture the good lighting. I don't take the time to have 15 different apps to, you know, create a really compelling post. But what I will tell you is this is an interesting story. So, uh the Newport Beach Country Club, um I did a couple cars for uh the head chef and and some people in the kitchen uh at f- that they worked at the Newport Beach Country Club. And this is kind of a a uh, uh, Instagram hack that I've been really thinking about. Um, and I didn't do the cars at the country club. I actually did the cars uh, in an adjacent parking lot to the country club, right? But what I did was I used the geotagging and I used, set my location for the country club, right? Because kind of kind of did the point that you were just talking about. I started... I started targeting areas that I wanted to work. And, and even if you weren't, 
in that area at the time of your posting, you could still geotag that location, right? And Instagram's right. gotten a lot better at that. So what I did was I posted a few pictures of the cars that I did at or for the employees of the country club, even though I didn't do them on the country club property. And then I tagged that I was at the country club. Well, I would get like random likes and stuff like that. Because if you, if you have good imagery and then you pop up in the top, like 12 pictures, right? A lot of people are going to see those. So that could be a marketing strategy for Instagram. But um, what ended up happening was about six months after I had it posted, I actually got a message from the country club asking for me to remove the pictures. Really? Yes. E- even though they weren't done on, on country club property. Oh, for privacy reasons. Uh, you know, it, was that, was that their, was that their thing? Let me see if I can go back in my Instagram DMS and see what it, what their reasoning was. Um, but if they did mention, they, from what I remember, it was like, Hey, Oh, here it is right here. Okay. It says, hello, Jimbo. Thank you for your amazing work at Newport country club. I noticed, (laughs) (laughs) which it wasn't at the country club. I didn't do it at the country club. I noticed that you posted a picture of a Porsche and a Mercedes Benz at our club. It wasn't at their club, but if you could please remove this, the post for it includes the license plate to one of our members. Not uh, true. It's not true either, though. Oh, because you blocked them out, or you didn't. Well, it was. The they're not members. They were employees, not members. Oh, okay. Because it's a privacy matter, I do ask that the post be removed immediately. Thanks in advance. So, had you blocked out the license plate, do you think it would have been an issue, or they would have tried to find out, find some other I way? Don't, to I, take it down? I don't know. Maybe just looking at it back now, maybe it was just the license plate issue. Um, but, uh, I mean, here's the thing, right? It got their attention, right? So if it got their attention, it yeah. probably got other people's attention. And oh, that's, right. Absolutely. And, and that's kind of what I was getting out of, like, geotag places that you want to work and areas that you want to work and maybe use the sexy cars to, to you know, nail the imagery. Um, and then geotag places that, you know, higher end areas than maybe you actually even did that car in. I didn't do the car at the country club. I did it next to it, but tag the country club because I figured people have money that go to the country club that can be a member at the country club. There's all sorts of Instagram hacks and strategies and all that kind of stuff. But it's, you know, basically with all social media, you, if you're, if you're a local business, like a detail shop, or a mobile detailer, you need to be highlighting your local area as much as possible because all that, you know, the algorithm is going to continue to push your post to people that like the city of Seal Beach or, you know, Newport Beach 100%. Club or whatever. If those people like it and you share it on Facebook from your Instagram, which you should do, right? Um, tie, tie, tie those two things in, um, then it's going to show that content to those same people, that targeting is really important. 100%. So to go back to our original thing, I don't think, I don't know about Hootsuite, but I don't, but I th- I know with Buffer, you can queue imi- you can queue everything up for uh, Instagram, but you can't actually physically schedule the post. I don't know why, but maybe it has something to do with the back end. The back yeah, end. It is, it's been that way since, I tried Hootsuite like two years ago, and it's been that way ever since. So I mean, there's just no way to do it. I don't know why. Yeah. Facebook owns Instagram, so fix it. Fix it. It's just, <laughs> it's very simple. Like, just fix it. Yeah. Just fix it. It's the guy from Saturday Night Live, my favorite character. Yeah, he's the fix. He just says, "Here's what you do: you identify the problem and you fix the problem." Right. That's very that's very cool. simple. Are there any other things that you learned uh, over the past ten months that you would do differently for Detailer Supper? Um, well, continuing product development and concentrating on that. And then, uh, one of the things that's been on my list is this ambassador program, which I'm hoping to, to do um, Let's hear about it. soon. So the ambassador program is basically just a, a thing where people, um, and it's pretty common in product stuff. So people use your products, the ones that love the products, then basically apply to be a detailers helper ambassador. And I'm still putting together all the details on this, but but they would be the people that then get to do stuff like prototype test and 
um, and some of that kind of stuff. And also they may get discounts and, and that kind of thing. But you know, what it is, is it, it's those, those people that, um, help promote detailers helper or want to help promote detailers helper through natural organic means, you know, whether it's just, Hey, if you're going to take a picture of a, of you working on a car, it'd be cool if you had your detailers helper on logo or not. Um, that kind of thing. So that's, we're working on some of that. Um, and, uh, as far as like for detailing guys, um, just make sure you're dedicating that time and budget, um, to, to, uh, to be able to put that in and, and make sure you're growing your business, which I have done just not at the level that I was able to do before. Um, but you know, we'll get back there. Have you thought about like having any, uh, and you don't have to answer this at all, but have you thought about having any like s- detail? I know you do like Air Force One sponsorship and stuff like that, but but more so like brand ambassadors that are out there kind of pumping it so you don't have to, or does that require money and, and time well, yeah, to manage be, that? I mean, that, that'd be sort of the idea behind this ambassador program is to is to do that. And honestly, we have, I mean, I've sent out quite a few yeah, yeah. different events. Okay. Um, uh, the ROI is not great on that, depending on how it. organized it is. Um, you know, I think that we've done pretty well with those, and I wouldn't hesitate to do it the right to the right people. Okay. Uh, um, but I've been more hesitant um, to do that. It's sort of like a, you know, and if you equate that to the detailing world, I don't know if you see this around your area, but you'll see a dealership um, that they, if you put a sticker on, Jiffy Lube type places do this a lot. Uh, where you get a, if you put one of their logos on your car, you get a discount every time you come back. Okay. Have you seen that stuff? Y- yeah. 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 And so, you know, that may be a, if you're, if you're doing a quick wash campaign or something like that, where you sign people up for maintenance, um, mm-hmm. maybe they get a certain, you know, every fifth one free. If you, we talk about stuff like this in the detailer inner circle where when you have, oh, okay. when you have, uh, you know, the goal with a lot of the stuff we teach with the detailer inner circle, um, which thanks for the, the logo, by the way. Yeah. Nice job. <laughs> I didn't my even do- season. De- my season desist <laughs> order should be on its way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, luckily I'll just forward that over to Pete. I had nothing to do with it. I saw it and I was like, Oh man, this is going to be trouble. Anyway. Hey, um, I must meet, what do they say? Flattery is the, is the best <laughs> yeah. uh, compliment. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> Our patent is almost going through. So hopefully Uh-oh. people that far so and now i totally lost my train of thought but um you're talking about in detailers inner circle yes so a lot uh, of the yeah a lot of the stuff we talk about and it's focused around like a continuity program where you're getting customers you know to sign up for a monthly service month after month so that you have money before you have money hitting your account before the month even begins to help run a sustainable business and then part of part of the plan to get customers to agree to that is to give them services for free. Now we go in way more detail, obviously in the inner circle, but to your point of like, you know, uh, you know, sign up for this and we're going to give you this in return for signing up or for, for being an ambassador or, or doing anything like that. Another idea I just had would be, what if, uh, and people may not be interested in it and it may not work, but almost like mini distributors where I'm kind of fascinated by the idea of giving detailers a way to earn additional revenue other than detailing. Right. So like, what if like, I don't think any product brand really does it effectively, but maybe I'm just naive to that, but like selling other people's products See at car shows and and trying to hit you know uh, dealerships with demo days and, and stuff like that. I feel like that would be a great side revenue stream for for detailers. Has anything yeah. ever crossed your plate like that for the detailers helper? Well, for detailers helper, it's a little bit. I mean, we do like um, affiliate programs and that kind Got of it. stuff. Um, the challenge for us is that what you what you end up with is people that want to buy five belts. Got it. <laughs> uh, in my, in my, you know, they want to buy five for, and they want to sign up as a distributor so they Got can it. get them for 20% off or, or whatever it is. Right. And so, uh, as a manufacturer, you, you basically have to have, and my MOQs are fairly low, but you basically have to have minimal order quality quantities to make it, you know, to make it worthwhile. But there are some cool products. I mean, you, uh, distributorship, and I don't really know what Adam's, um, 
distributor program looks like now, but I was actually a distributor for him. Oh, really? Uh, Interesting. A few years ago, I may still be listed because there was like me in Montana. <laughs> I had a guy, you know, I, I have my shop in my house and I had a dude show up on a Saturday morning wanting to buy oh my gosh. products at my house. And I'm like, how did you even? And then it dawned on me that my web, my my home address was on their website. But oh my gosh, um, they've got a pretty good deal where you buy in. What did you know, that look I, like? What it, so? Well, they have a different buy in. Like I don't know, you buy like a thousand dollars worth of product and you okay. get thirty percent off. You buy two thousand okay. dollars worth of product, you get thirty five percent off. And I don't know whether that's even the structure or what it is now. Um, but I'm sure there are other product lines that have a similar thing. You know, you're not making, you know, 50% on every, uh, you're not doubling your money on every product you sell, but hell, you but know, 35 ain't bad. <laughs> What's that? 35% ain't bad. Yeah. 35%. Plus you have a value add for your customer. Yep, exactly. And, um, and most of the time they have what we do, which is minimum advertised pricing. Right. Um, so you know that you're not going to get undercut by different people. And I mean, you know, you know, as well as I do, there are literally hundreds of brands right. in the detailing world. Um, so, you know, pick something that you like and, and see if you can sell it. Mm -hmm. I love it. I think we hit it. Do you, is there anything else you want to add to that? Or should we just move right into uh, how people can follow you if they haven't heard for the 10th time? This is like the shortest episode ever, 30 well, minutes. Well, we can keep going. I mean, you seem disappointed. We can, I got time. I just Well, usually we talk for a lot longer, but uh, you know, we can you know, I don't know. <laughs> you may need to split this into two when you forget to <laughs> schedule somebody else next week. <laughs> <laughs> we can definitely keep going. I just don't want to run I just don't want to have dead air. That's Yeah, all. you're good. Yeah. No, well, no, no. What else do you want to talk about? I, you and know, the only and we could talk like off have, air too, by the way. I've had this I've had this thing uh, about ROI let's, in my mind. Let's hear um, it. Um uh, so basically return on investment, right? I was right. going to do this video and I still may shoot it or I may just use this, but um, <laughs> if I, if I said if I said, "Hey, give me a 1000 bucks mm -hmm. and I will give you 1100 back." Mm -hmm. What would you do? I would Take your thousand dollars, and or you would, I'd give you a thousand dollars. Yeah, you would give me a hundred thousand dollars if uh, you had. I'd em. give you a million, hundred percent. Right, right. So because it has a positive return on investment. So what always cracked me up about Vegas is uh, is they advertise pays ninety three cents on the dollar. I'm like, why is that a good deal? I'll stand out front of the casino and do that all day long, make seven percent on every dollar, but. Um, you know, that's a negative ROI. If you think about gambling, it's entertainment, but, uh, you're not, you're not going to get that back. So when it comes to everything in your detailing business, you need to be examining your ROI. That's everything from products, um, to advertising, to staffing, um, how you can wrap your efficiency tools around that, like detailers helper or, 100%. uh, or a new, um, or a new polisher or whatever. I mean, even if it's like, you know, if you're buying a four or $500 polisher, you need to look at the ROI on that and say, how much time am I going to save uh, on each car with this polisher versus an $80 polisher? Um, and because it's, 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 the math is pretty no brainer. And I honestly think that detailers helper is the same way. I mean, the thing pays for itself in like three cars. Um, so, and there are tons of products out there, but even chemicals are that way. Right. Uh, you may have a product that's that the dilution rate um, is better, so you get more cars out of a given amount, um, and so the are even though it's more expensive, your per ounce cost or whatever may be may be better from one or the other. So, I've just been thinking about a lot about return on investment because we've been doing some stuff on social media with Facebook ads with another project that's totally not detail related, um, but uh, and so the ROI on that. Uh, as we build this, it's website stuff. I won't even go into it, but effectively we were spending like $60 per customer on acquisition costs. Um, and, and we're, our, our average order value was somewhere around 120 bucks, which sounds good until you figure in all the extra costs. We ended up, we were upside down for like two weeks on the specific ad set. So I ended up dumping the ad set. So you have to really look at your numbers um, with marketing and pretty much everything else. So that's just a short topic I've been thinking about. Lately. No, no, I love it. And it's, it's 
so prevalent and it's so not talked about. And I, and I do think we're kind of getting into this next, like this next step for detailers that are really trying to transition this passion into, you know, not just a passion, but into a, a real business. And then almost think of, start thinking about an exit strategy with it too, right? Of like, man, I can build up this business and this business is an asset that I can one day sell. Right. You know what I mean? And, and and so the things that you're talking about is as far as building that brand and something like you said, actually I thought that sounded pretty good. It's it's costing you sixty bucks to acquire a customer and the and the average order price is one twenty. But like you said, you have a bunch of other stuff and I don't know what what this is. Yeah, so you is. have margin, you have you know, you have website fees, you have all these different fees and so that all figures into it. Right. Um, and you know, if you carry that into a, a detailer, you have chemical fees, you have time fees, electricity, water, licensing, all of that kind of stuff. That's what and not you to know, keep you have pumping to look at all the math. Yeah, and not to keep pumping the inner circle, but that's why the more guys we get in the inner circle, the more excited I am about it because for exactly what you're talking about, Kevin, we have a full uh, sheet breakdown to where yep. we teach guys how to how to break down to to the dollar amount so you know exactly how much a customer is costing you to acquire how much profit you can have from that all everything you're talking about is is stuff that we cover i love it because it's so important right because look yeah. you you could have just looked at that and said okay it's costing us 60 bucks but we're making 120 done let's do this over and over and over Right. And then you would have quickly realized that you were losing money. Yeah, it's easy. I mean, it, it's it's funny because I would bet that most detailers are not doing that still. I did a I did a video called if you don't know your numbers, you don't know Jack. But um, it talked a lot about that. But um, yeah, it's interesting because one of the one of, we had a post on that detailing business one on one group where a guy had posted his mobile setup, which basically was just you know, normal stuff out of his car and all that. And all these guys are posting saying that, oh, that looks like crap and you really need to buy a new van and all that. I'm like, really? Why don't you, you know, this kid is trying to make money and, and trying to build his business that way. And he's probably looking at the numbers. I mean, you go buy an $80,000 uh, Mercedes van and, and it's watch it, take you watch while, it, <laughs> take you a while to pay that off. Uh, I don't know if you know anybody that has bought said type of van but you know the worst uh, part about that is the worst part is that i thought that was going to be and this is where you have to be careful <laughs> and learn from other people is that purchase backfired on me and i ended up getting rid of it because of that reason is that i thought it was going to portray this really you know great image and professionalism and this and that and i got nothing but slack for that van i mean the the comments that i got from from either old customers or new customer. It was mainly new customers, not so much older customers because I had already built a rapport with them. But mainly when I would go out to talk with a new customer, they thought I was going to be way overpriced, you know, cause I had this huge black van rolling up. Um, I, I did better when I had like a crappy, you know, Chevy express that I was worried about even making it to the appointment in. Yeah. You know? I mean, people are going to judge you, What's interesting is that you what you see as a status symbol or a level of profession, higher professionalism, they see as a holy crap. How much is he going to charge me to make that payment? You know, kind exactly. of exactly. I mean, I'm exactly. not going to take my co I'm not going to take my Cobra out and go detail cars out of it, even though I can fit a detail bag in it. But if I roll up in that, people are going to be like, "Why are you?" I mean. How much are you going to charge me? Yeah, for this? like, is that necessary to? That's almost what it came down to. Is like, is that really necessary to have that to detail my car? And and that was one thing I didn't even think about, you know, before getting it. I just thought, no, people are going to love this. I'm going to be, and it, and it did get awkward when I would be detailing cars that were like, you know, I'd be doing a, a 2003 Toyota Camry that's worth you know eight hundred dollars, and I'm rolling up in an eighty thousand dollar rig. You know, and the people would yeah. be like, uh, okay. Yeah. And again, it, it has to match your, I mean, everything you do has to match your target market, right? We talked exactly. about ideal customer and all that before in other podcasts, but you know, you have to know your customer. I mean, if you're, if your main clientele was at the Newport beach country club, maybe that Mercedes fits in and it doesn't even, they don't even care. Right. 
Um, but if people are, if, if your average customer's car is half of what your detailing rig is, right. Then, you know, and name brands matter. If that was, if that was a Ford right. transit, exactly. it'd be a whole a transit, different, they probably wouldn't even have cared going on um, be, beyond that. I think even if it was a sprinter, but it was white, I think it would have been different. I think that the Mercedes logo on the front was so big and then it was, I mean, this sounds racist, but it was so black, yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it was so much black paint and I had blacked yeah. out the windows. Well, they, it, ex- they expected like Tyson Gibson or the guy, <laughs> whoever the guy is from uh, Fast and the Furious to, to right. come out of that thing, right? Right. So. Yeah. And they're like this guy. And, and that's what's weird is I, I detail in an affluent area. I mean, whether I'm in Seal Beach, Huntington Beach, Newport Beach, I mean, I stay along the coastland, right? So there's not very many times that I'm in neighborhoods with homes under eight, nine hundred thousand dollars You know, most of the time they're they're a million dollar homes, 1.2, 1.3, 2 million. You know, I'm, I'm dealing in really affluent, not super affluent, but affluent areas, you know? So that's why I thought, man, this isn't going to be that bad, but, but I don't know. There's a difference between old money and new money sometimes, you know? And right. Right. Well, I mean, effectively you're showing up in a suit to detail right. cars. Yeah. And that doesn't fit. And it didn't know? fit. And, it, right. You're exactly so, right. Yeah. So yeah. Learn, learn from Jimbo's mistakes. Don't buy a sprinter. Case. Don't buy a black yeah, sprinter. You should, you should, you should drive a 2007 Denali like I do that has 220,000 miles on it and a broken windshield. Oh uh, man. You know, I, I, I'm like, uh, and these, this is why I love these conversations and why I've had you on for the 11th time is we always go on tangents that I end up enjoying, but it, it, it just amazes me how much success guys can have. Um, you know, and one guy comes to mind, Travis McNutt, you know, he details, he still details out of an infinity G 37. Yeah. It, you know, and the guy is killing it. He's landing $4,000 coding jobs. You know, he's killing it. And yet now he's working out of shops and stuff, but he still travels out of his G 37. And so that's when I hear that argument of like, you need a pressure washer to be professional or you need a van to be professional. I'm like, not really. Like you just got to make it work with whatever you got. Did I lose you, Kevin? And, and oh, there you go. Yeah, I lost your first sec. Say that. Oh, I said if you're doing a 2004 Accord, just make sure it's clean. I mean, right. Just like a shirt. If you're wearing a t-shirt, wear a t-shirt. But if it's got stains all over it, hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, get another one. So it's a you know, just make the best of whatever you've got. I think your your attitude and your professionalism about yep. what you're using can go a long way when you communicate with customers. Um, but as you found out, you also need to again know who your target is and know what their expectation is and and what their perception might be. And sometimes it's trial and error, right? I thought you know all these other guys around me are in these real ghetto, dirty vans and. Um, you know, so I'm going to, I'm going to stick out like a sore thumb and I nailed that, you know, I did, I did, (laughs) I definitely did stick out like a sore thumb, but it it wasn't, it wasn't a good thing. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Yeah. You would have been better with your, with the infinity, right? Or with your uh, your other van. And that's why now I just, I, it's so funny. I transitioned to a truck, you know, cause I, I wanted, I wanted some distance from the chemicals. Um, and I also wanted something that when I was off duty was a little bit more enjoyable to drive than a 2007 Chevy express. Um, (laughs) and so I'm in a truck now and it's just crazy that it's a brand new truck, right? Not that much less than the sprinter was. Um, I mean, considerably less, but not all that less. And, uh, I, no one ever said, and I almost, I started to worry that like, I'm going to be in two plane of a vehicle now. Right. So I'm I'm going to the opposite end of the spectrum of now I'm in like too much of an unmarked car. No one gives a crap about my vehicle. Now I don't get any comments, <laughs> nothing, <laughs> not one thing. They're just like, Oh, that's your rig. I'm like, yeah. They're like, Oh, cool. Pull it up right over here. I'm like, yeah, okay. there you go. You know, it's just so interesting. That's cool. Yeah. So ROI, right? That's our thoughts on ROI and vehicles and, and all that stuff. So. And staying on top of it too, right? Like like 
you got to be on top of all aspects of your of your business. If I wasn't on top of it in the beginning, I would have never got the Sprinter van. If I wasn't on top of it and in queue with what was going on and what was being said, I would have kept the Sprinter van, you know? And so you you there's all the the hard part is that there's all these all these moving parts going on at any given time, you know, and you well, you, re- you really got to be plugged into them. Yeah, yeah, I mean, essentially if you think about it, you have a relationship with your business. So like, you know, you and your wife, I know have date nights Love and that, that kind of yeah. stuff. So you make efforts to build a relationship with your spouse, with your friends, with whatever. Well, you need to build that same relationship with your, with your, uh, with your business. This may get a little esoteric, but you know, it's, uh, you're, you're, you need to build that business and develop that relationship so that you know it inside and out, you know what it needs, you know what it doesn't need, you know what it likes, what it doesn't want all of that kind of stuff. So uh, that helps a lot. And if you neglect it, it goes away. That's right. Yeah. If you neglect it, it kills you in your sleep, basically, is what will happen. Um, well, let's, <laughs> so. let's, let's revitalize the detailer helper, huh, Kevin? Right. That's what we need to do. So, hey, I've got some cool stuff coming out. You want to hear about it? I do. I do. So look, at all this, we, look at all this content you had just pent up inside of you. I know it's been, yes. well, I mean, yeah, I just, I, to sit down and shoot videos has become very difficult primarily yeah. because we shot two full, uh, seasons of this Jeep build. Mm. Um, and so that, that is a lot of editing. And so anyway, so we've been, uh, I've got a couple of prototypes sitting on my desk that we're having fun with. We're prototyping a new apron, which will be not your average apron. It's Turn on your some... camera and let me see this. Uh, let's see. So I could see screenshot the... it internet connection works so we have this is the original prototype and we're adding some stuff to oh, wow. this but, okay and you hear that yeah so it's waterproof oh wow so that's one that's one thing that we're doing it's a great um, idea it'll be waterproof but I'm, I'm putting in a couple of features that we haven't really announced yet you can uh, turn your camera off now oh thanks you don't want to look <laughs> at me oh wait you have to see these. well we have these we're doing the same thing on these this is a okay a prototype bag interesting so it's basically <laughs> the same bags, but different. It's waterproofed material. Okay. Um, so a lot of the guys that do a lot of films, um, and we just haven't had time to really work on this. They they complain that the cotton bags, which are designed that way on purpose, so they're soft. Right. Um, have too many fibers. And okay. So the fibers can get in the 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 uh, film. And so what we're doing is we're prototyping some different fabric options so that we would have one specifically made. It would basically be the detailer's helper, um, but it would be made in a waterproof material. So there's no fibers. Interesting. Um, That's a great idea. It's not as, it's not soft like like the detailer's helper. So there's a trade off there. Right. But Uh, it serves um, a different purpose. It serves a different purpose. And we may be able to use that technology in some other industries too, like window cleaners and and that kind of stuff that didn't like the cotton because they get wet. Uh, oh. So we're prototyping some of that. I do have my new polisher loops that are in and almost out. We're, we're, uh, we tested them a little bit, uh, and we're making sure that they fit both like flex size, Rupa size, you know, Festool, all that kind of stuff. So um, that's basically a, uh, a version of our polisher bag, but it's just a loop um, that you can sit on your hip. Got it. That's exciting. Yeah, so we've got new products. I mean, I have been working, but uh, you, <laughs> you know, I mean, just slacking. The whole not time. as much as I, <laughs> not as much as I should. And that those processes take a lot of time and money and and all that to prototype different stuff. But right, right. So when are, are the uh, are the aprons done then? Or no, not? they're not. They they had neglected one of the special features that I wanted, um, and so we I should have new samples um, pretty soon. And then I'm going to send them out. I'm sending out a couple of these bags to some different guys um, to test the the film properties, whether or not that would work. And if they report back good news, then we'll then we'll proceed with that. With the aprons, I'm hoping that we can get the new samples in the next few weeks. And then if those work, then I'll get a couple of my you know people to test. And if you're interested in this, even if you have cursory interest in this ambassador type program, uh, let me know. Uh, this is for your listeners. Let me know, and I and uh, not for me. I <laughs> I, I'm not. Well, you you don't want me. Te- you can test whatever you want, man. I don't care. <laughs> so, Jimbo. By the way, this is a not for you. 
<laughs> yeah, you're definitely <laughs> eligible. But uh, I like that apron know. idea. I, I really do like that apron. Well, there's a ton of aprons out there. I mean, obviously, we're not reinventing the wheel, sure. but we want to do stuff that actually um, serves a, a purpose. Like, I don't like to just make the same thing that's already out there. I did a I did a little bit of a test post to ask people what they would like in an apron and if they would be willing to pay, you know, X number of dollars for them. And, and people were pretty positive about it, assuming that it's not just your, you know, basic uh, micro fleece apron that that everybody else has for 10 bucks. I mean, it's not going to be a $10 apron. Right. For sure. Right. right. So. But think about how many, I mean, from a business standpoint, think about how many different industries or, or different niches, just an apron might help you to get into, you know, and right. then maybe the, the belt can be a secondary add on item once they like the apron. Right. Yeah. And so, and we're designing it obviously around the belt. So right. you put the apron on, you put the belt on and they work, you know, hand in hand. And, and, uh, mm. so yeah, we'll see how, we'll see how that goes. We've had a ton of different prototypes that we put out and they just didn't work. So, right. Uh, that's how we got to where we're at. So if people want to become a part of the ambassador program or want to follow you. How do, how do they do that? Well, you can go to Instagram detailers helper official, Ooh. uh, which is, is uh, on Instagram, Facebook. Obviously we have detailers helper page. You can just message me through that. Or if you're friends with me on Facebook, uh, it, you can just PM me. Uh, through that or go to detailers helper, uh, dot com and you can find contact information there too. Awesome. Is there anything else you want to add there? No, I think so. It's fun. Thanks for continuing to have me on. I'm looking forward to, we're going to talk again, right? In a couple of weeks. Yeah. In person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Well, and SEMA too, but you're going to be down with, uh, Mr. Jason Rose, right? Uh, yeah, we're coming down, uh, in a couple of weeks. Um, what is I that? Think, the 14th yeah, people, or something? Yeah. Something like that. We're going to be over in Riverside. So we're going to make sure we come over and talk to you and, nice. and, uh, do a podcast with Mr. Jason Rose. And he was pretty excited. I talked to him about it yesterday. So, oh, cool. Yeah. I haven't had Jason on in a long time, so I'm excited to, to have him on you. Uh, yeah, 12, I know. 12 I'm, times. I understand. That's, that's okay. <laughs> I don't mind. Jason's been on a handful. Jason's probably been on. Jeez, he well, we did a couple double double episodes with him. He's probably been on six times. Wow! So well, he, he's not that far behind. Yeah, but the the thing is, I mean, really, he's three times or more as good as me. So his number is more <laughs> like eighteen. So um, <laughs> that guy is has more knowledge than it's most. insane. It's insane. Yeah, I mean, he he is uh, he's the man for sure, and and uh, he's has the humility to go along with he it. He does. Which, he's, yeah. he's awesome. He's super awesome. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that, especially in person. Cause since he moved, I obviously haven't done any in person stuff. I tried to at SEMA last year and we just, it was crazy. Well, you're at SEMA for like 37 minutes, dude. I hate Vegas. <laughs> I too. hate Vegas. And so, yeah, you know, and I, to be totally frank and honest, and I know we're going off a tangent, but like I was so disappointed last year at SEMA. There was like straight up, there was nothing cool. Like, well, I shouldn't say that. There was nothing. There, Innovative? Uh, yes. You compare it to the year before where like McGuire's had just come out with a machine. Maybe that was two years before that. But like McGuire's was, relaun- uh, was launching a new machine. Then the... Then the Rupes like hybrid was coming out, and there oh, was yeah, like that came out. I was thinking that came out last year. That came out two years ago, right? Two years ago, you know. And so there was like, there was really that sense of like fear of missing out with SEMA. You know what I mean? Yep. And, and let's be honest. I mean, the detailing section of the SEMA show is like a blip on the radar, right? Like, it's <laughs> yeah. really little compared to the whole show. So if there's nothing that exciting going on, it makes the show really long. You know what I yeah. mean? So. Oh yeah, I know. And yeah, and you were there like a week, freaking crazy guy. Well, yeah, we'll be there a week this time too. Ugh. Well, Sugar High's in SEMA this year, so there, here's a shameless plug for that. Let's do it. Um, I'm all for the shameless plug. Sugar High, the Jeep is going to be over in the North Hall. So if you want to get out of the South Hall uh, and come visit us, Wayne Carini is going to be there both Wednesday and Thursday, That's signing cool. autographs in our booth. We're in the we're in the razor booth. We don't have an actual booth, but um, Sugar Guy is going to be there, so come check that out. Come visit us, and I'm going to be around the North Hall too at some. Are point. Are you going to be doing autographs too? 
Um, I did sign one autograph last year, but that was weird. So no, <laughs> I'm not going to sign autographs. Uh, so, I signed. I didn't it. even know that girl, and I don't know why she had her top off. Um, <laughs> so, totally kidding. Um, We're so. still recording. <laughs> I know we are. I was totally kidding. Did you get a picture of that? My wife does not leave my side when we're at SEMA. I bet. Well, you're a... No, that's not true. You're very handsome. That's why she doesn't leave your side. (laughs) She doesn't want you getting picked up by any other dude. I mean, women. There you you go. That's right. So, yeah, shameless plug, come visit. I don't know when you're going to release this, but... um, Monday. Monday. So come visit us uh, from 1030 to 1130, Wednesday and Thursday. Come see Wayne Carini. Um, Come see the girls of Team Sugar High and uh, come see the Jeep. This Jeep turned out really well. We did a full custom. You're incredible, by the way. That's custom custom dash. So it's pretty cool. Just incredible that you pulled that off. I mean, you don't you don't give yourself enough credit because Eh. it's incredible. No, it, it's I'm excited. It's one of a kind, um, and so it should it should garner a lot of attention, which would be kind of cool. And it will be cool. Uh, you know, it it'll be pretty cool. So, yeah. So that's that. And she's Michelle's actually there for the revealing of that pickup. That pickup's going to be in the BASF um, booth at 11:30 on Tuesday. Awesome. Uh, so that is a that is a really cool truck. It's built by 90 women. Women only oh work gosh. on that vehicle. So. I could make a lady joke right now, but I think I'll save it. All right. Well, well, go say it. Wait and save it until you're near bogey, and then I'm sicker on you. <laughs> cool. All right. I think we're starting to lose it at this point. Yeah, any, we're good. <laughs> any, uh, any last plugs, or did you already do that? No, I already plugged, plugged away. So, cool. yeah. Thanks, guys. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Auto Detailing Podcast. Head on over to autodetailingpodcast.com for full show notes and links of everything that we've talked about today. And don't forget to check out our resources page for a direct link to all the products talked about not only on today's episode, but that I use in my day-to-day detail business. They have direct links so you can purchase and get free shipping right from that page. That's autodetailingpodcast.com. We'll see you on the next episode.